So one thing that I actually do want to cover for a bit today is uh, the um, Keeper Gym because somebody actually asked me to do this before. So I'm just going to do this really quick and uh, get the inputs out here too. So, um, little quick, uh, well, first let me put this. Hmm, I gotta do this. Alright. Shift F4. Alright, we're good. So, when it comes to the. Well, there's two different variations. One is the Keeper Gen where. You do um, where you do low forward, uh, standing fierce, low forward, standing fierce, and you keep on doing it. And um, you know, basically, the general idea with the keeper gen is that you want to use it as a reset in order to get more damage and more meter. So the ba the main idea is that you want to use it in a situation where you know they they have full life like this, and it's like a mid screen combo that won't do too much. So, for example, a perfect a perfect scenario where you can do a keeper gen setup would be uh, jab short strong into into shoulder. So then, from there, that way, if you do something like um, you know low forward standing fierce into low roundhouse, you get a mix up situation after that, and you get to do something you get to do something like that. And from there, you already get about half meter and the life. The damage is already given, so so that's the basic idea with that. Uh, I mean, it's not always the general concept that you want to use, but um, it's one of the, it's one of the most uh, I guess I guess it, it brings out the full potential of the keeper gen in that sense because you get to keep that mix up going and you get to build um, as much meter as you can basically, and the meter is basically what equivalents to the damage. So as always, the basic rule with an agent is that. Three gun agents in one round equals a win. So, uh, so a majority of the times, what makes it easier to do the keeper gen on certain characters is when they're crouching, because obviously their hitbox is a lot lower. So, so the um, the standing fierce won't really hit close. Whereas if they're cr if they're crouching, if you do one two three. The standing fierce will will hit far, so that makes it even better. Um, so from here, the basic uh, the basic inputs for it is when they're standing, you want to do jab short strong, standing standing strong, low forward, and then strong fierce strong strong fierce low forward strong fierce low forward. So again, jab short strong. Strong low forward, and then strong fierce low forward, strong fierce low forward, strong fierce low forward. Now, obviously, you know what? I'm gonna shut you up right now because I'm busy. So, the basic usage for using the standing strong is obviously to gain that extra distance because you can see it, it gives them the extra, the extra distance, and that's actually a part of the the second variation that I'll that I'll cover in a little bit, but um. The basic idea is that you want to do it fast enough so that the standing strong whiffs and it cancels the animation so you can go into the standing fierce and that that brings him much closer. So which allows for the continuation of the combo. So again, when he's standing, jab short strong. And you can keep it going like that. And then you can do a reset like that and from there you can do a, a dive kick setup or simply a uh, jump forward or anything that you really want to do um, as long as it maximizes the meter you have afterwards and then that was supposed to be a dash punch and it would give me half meter but you can see the damage it gives about like what like like 30% of damage if everything is completed so the as, as always I, the basic variation that I go for is um, two sets of the keeper gen into a low roundhouse and that way I can do a dive kick mix up after that. I can either land in front of them or behind them and um, 
you know that makes it much more difficult to deal with especially if I can go into another into another pressure setup into a command grab and that gives even more meter because well, I'll show it really quick when you have a, a, a command grab at the end of the meter like this it gives a good a good amount of meter and a good chunk of life as well but the basic idea is to get the meter first and fuck my life I can't calculate right one, two, okay. and fucking shit. And you can see that's almost half meter, and you know a good a good amount of life. I think it's only that much of that much life because I have a uh, the uh, the settings on you know one percent one one star damage, so. The damage is whatever, but what matters is the meter, as I said. Because from there, for example, two low strongs, and then a die kick set up into into jab short strong into into t into uh, shoulder, and you're fine. So, of course, that's what makes it even more dangerous. So that you know, you get another Ganesian in like 2.5 seconds. But um, okay, so the first variation, obviously, start out with standing strong, low forward, strong fierce, low forward, strong fierce, low forward. Now it's a lot easier when they're crouching because you get to do simply go into fierce and then low forward instead of simply doing standing strong first. So yeah, let me let me do this different way. So if he's crouching, you can see that I can do the standing fierce from there and it'll hit. Whereas if he's standing, it may hit, but it's it's a little too close. So that when I want to go for the low forward into a strong fierce, the strong fierce will actually hit him. And you can see the, str the strong hit him at that point, so there's no point in doing it from that distance. So the basic idea is that when you do it when he's crouching, you can simply go into and the strong fierce won't hit him and you can see when he's crouching it's a lot easier obviously because one you know the spacing is correct so that the standing fierce will hit whereas the strong won't hit when you do in the Kara and on top of that he has extra hit stun so you know you have a lot more leniency when you're doing the combo So again, the basic idea is that you want to do a reset, or you can simply just do a, a combo into the corner as well. And then into whatever kind of combo after that. And then whatever from there. But again, the basic idea is to simply get a reset after that. And then from there, you'll be fine. Nah, too slow. One little thing to help you would be to do a low strong into low forward. And then do the combo afterwards. Ah. And yeah, you can see that it does a good amount of damage when you get the full combo, but not as much as when you do a regular combo. So for example, you could do something like this. And then just comp just do something else after that. Because obviously the more hits you do, the more scaling there is, so you don't really want to do that. So that leads into the second variation, which is... Uh, the, the high punch loop or daipon loop as they call it in Japan but basically it takes it takes the spacing from the crouching position or simply just uh, as I said before doing the standing strong when you have this cor cor the correct spacing from here you can simply just take the first half of the variation and do just uh, with standing strong into fierce and then keep it going keep it going keep it going from there now the general thing that you have to remind that you have to remember is that when you're doing the strong, 
you hold forward so that you get that little inch closer. And then from there you get standing fierce and then forward, sta forward strong, standing fierce, forward strong, standing fierce. Now you have to make sure that you let go of the forward obviously because or else you're going to get this, the forward fierce. So you can do, you can start out with uh, low strong, low strong, um, hmm. yeah low strong standing fierce then, then, no you do not hold forward, you ho you press forward when you do the strong and then standing fierce. So forward strong, standing fierce, forward strong, standing fierce. So obviously the basic idea is that you move that little inch forward and you know you get a uh, you get the maximized spacing for it. Because normally when you do it with just standing strong, standing standing strong, uh, fierce, standing strong, fierce, uh, you only get about three hits at most. Otherwise you'll you'll end up being spaced out farther and it, the rest of it won't connect. So you can see I let go of the of the forward and you just completely spaced out. And you can see I just did I just did a uh, strong fierce strong fierce and it it completely missed out on everything else. Now when you do it from you know doing pressing forward at the same time as strong, you get that little inch forward and that helps you connect the standing fierce afterwards so you get more hits out of it. So you can see that he gets a lot more hits and it gives a much more much bigger carry over when uh when you're from mid screen like that. Now the the main problem is getting the timing for the strong fierce correctly. Because if you don't get the carry from the strong or that forward inch from from holding forward, then the standing fierce might might whiff at the same time, so it makes it a lot more difficult. So the basic idea is to get the timing right. And also the first initiating combo right too. So you just gotta keep it going from there, and for the most part, when you're about this distance, you can just continue the combo from there by doing a forward fierce into a hop kick or whatever. So there's a lot of different variations you can do. Shit. Like that. So the basic idea for using the the high punch loop is that it's not for simply just to be flashy or anything like that. It's actually to get the most amount of damage that you can out of uh, out of simply a, a carryover. Because normally, when you know in the beginning stages of the third strike with Ganagen, the basic carryover would be low strong standing fierce into dash punch. Now, obviously, that's a good carryover because you get to do a low short into palm after that, but it did a lot of scaling and it wasn't really effective so that's when this was developed and you can see that the damage is a lot it's more it's more potent when you when you get it like that whereas if you do this that's two hop kicks after the after the carryover and you can see how much damage it does And you can see this, this gives actually gives a little bit more damage. And almost yeah, about a good about a good five points of damage. But again, so basic idea is that you want to carry over with the high punch loop and continue the combo or whatever. Whereas with the keeper gen, you wanna go for a reset. And from there, you get to do whatever from, from uh, you get to do a mix up, command grab, uh, whatever you like to do. <laughs> so again, when um, when you get it like something like a strong, like a jab short strong into shoulder, you really want to go for a reset so that way you can maximize everything. You get a, a good amount of damage from that, but also you get the mix up afterwards. You know, some people may be able to show you, but you know, that's what 
you know, that's why you can block. You know, some people like to block, like to block when they wake up, but that's why you have command grab. You know, some people like to press buttons, but then that's why you do something like uh, standing strong, low, short to, for pressure. So if you guys tend to watch my videos, you'll see that, you know, when I'm about mid-screen, I tend to do that. Or when I tend to have, when I'm at a life deficit and the opponent has about 80% of, of life, I tend to go for that reset and it pays off dividends because, you know, I get half meter and a good amount of damage off of it. And then from whatever. Sometimes I go into the high punch loop, but again, I don't I don't really like to risk that because, um, you know, the fact that you can whiff the, the high punch is, it's not something that I want to do when I'm in Ganesian. Because anything could go wrong when it comes to something like that. So, sorry I have all this shit on the screen, but, you know, hopefully it shows it better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the Keeper Gen and the High Punch Loop. I mean, there's probably better timing. Oh, shit. There's probably better videos out there for timing. But, um... And I don't know if you can actually see it on the, uh, on the script. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the... If you feel that you're kind of you're getting spaced out a little bit more, that's why you can continue the combo from there. The good thing about Yun is that if you're a little bit of ways out, you can do something like that. Instead of worrying about getting all the high punch loops and then fucking it up later. <laughs> But as I said, these two these two variations have their specific functions. So for example, the Keeper Gen itself, uh, obviously I say to go for the reset. That's how I originally learned it and that's how... I think, I believe that's what the original purpose was. But then obviously everybody started taking the the idea of the, um, of the high punch loop. And making it more effective in real matches. Whereas the Keeper Gen, it needs a lot more dexterity for it, so... It's a lot harder to do um, in actual in actual matches, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, if there's other things you can do too, if you're not comfortable with it, you can do low strong standing fierce into hop kick. But again, the the amount of damage on this isn't too good, and the meat is not too good either. So one thing you can do is do a reset like that, and then whatever. And, uh, yeah, I mean... Unfortunately, if, it, if it's hard to read, then, you know, the most you'll have to do is probably slow down the video when I upload it. So, uh... But, yeah, I mean... Because that, that shows you how fast it has to be done, but at least you can see it uh, on the side scrolling. So that makes it a little bit easier. And then into I already explained that. So again, for the first variation with the keeper gen, uh, my my main focus. It doesn't have to be your main focus. Um, 
is to get the reset afterwards. So I would do two variations of it. Little little bit of pressure. And then into cannot get my my Kara dash punch out. Into a finisher. And then into whatever. The cool thing about this too is that you can actually go into something like uh, you don't even have to complete the entire combo. You can actually do something like into dash up, and that's that's good enough as well. And if you don't want to have to worry about you know any of the mix up afterwards. But again, remember the basic idea with this is that you have to you have to make sure that you know you get you maximize the amount of meter that you get from uh, from every single gun agent, whether it be you know if the opponent is almost dead or if you know if it's a mid screen combo that you can't finish, you want to make sure that you maximize the meter more than the damage. So. Mm, So let's see, a couple of variations from this is... That's one that I see Yuki do a lot. He likes to do the high punch loop into a, uh, into a corner combo, but then reset with universal overhead. And it's really effective too, because you get to, you know, you get to reset afterwards, but you also control the opponent when they're in the air because they have to parry. Now, um... Hmm. So some variations with this, you can walk up and then do universal overhead if you don't want to worry about the mix-up afterwards. I mean, that's the, that's the good thing about Ganagian is that you can get creative with it. But um, obviously, obviously you want to keep it practical as well. You don't want to do something too crazy and then run the risk of losing the entire game because you know you want to just get too flashy. So again, just a quick recap uh, for Keepagen. Low strong, low forward, then strong fierce, low forward, strong fierce, low forward, strong fierce, low forward. Strong is used to whiff, and the fierce is used to connect. And then, when they're standing, standing strong into low forward, into strong fierce, low forward, strong fierce, low forward. With crouching, you can do low strong, low forward if you wish, but you can just simply start with standing fierce and then continue the combo. Uh, with with high punch loop, same concept. Low strong, standing fierce, then strong fierce, strong fierce, strong fierce. Hold forward strong, fierce. Hold forward, hold forward, neutral fierce, hold forward, neutral fierce. And why is this? I, know, I can't get that. And then continue the combo afterwards. So again, the high punch loop is used for a carryover, while the keeper gen you can use for a. Uh, for a reset or any other type of variation that you want, as long as you can maximize the meter from it. Um, personally, I don't. I don't think it's worth it to do the keeper gen as a block string. Um, yes, it's good pressure, but it's very obvious. And not only that, it's very easy to mess up when it comes to, you know, the actual block string not connecting. You know, so if the opponent is blocking the entire thing. You know, they don't have to worry about you getting in closer because you're actually pushing yourself farther. So it's more beneficial to the opponent if you use the Keeper Gen as a block string, which is something that you don't want to do. So for that reason, you're better off just simply doing, you know, low strong, low short, low strong, low short, low strong, low short. And um, what what I basically do a lot of the times, if you watch my videos, or some sometimes from the Shelter stream, is that um, I like to do low short a lot. Because it has a lot of hit stun to it, and that way you can actually hit confirm it. 
if they don't block afterwards. So if they do something like, you can continue the combo from there, and you don't have to worry about, you know, continuing an extra pressure situation. You can see that all that connected, so it works even better if they're crouching, obviously, because they have more hits done. But it's very dangerous when you get to pressure them with something like with something like this. So again, Keeper Jin, I don't recommend it to use for a block stream. So, um, so yeah, that pretty much covers it. Again, Keeper Jin. Uh, if they're standing, it's kind of it's kind of one little note to keep in mind is that this variation is for the Shotos. It's not for every character. So I don't recommend using the Keeper Gen on every single character because, for example, on a character like uh, like Hugo or or Yurian, like the bigger characters, it doesn't work too well. You have to really get the proper spacing for it, and from from the jump. From if you're this close to them and do a jab shot strong into Ganajin, it's very difficult to get that type of setup where you get the proper spacing and you want to go into the Keeper Gen after that. It's very difficult to set that up. So me personally, I don't recommend doing it. Uh, the only characters that I tend to do it on are the Shotos or any other smaller characters like um, like Yun and Yang are perfect too. Um, Yun and Yang, Shotos. Um, Yun and Yang, Shotos, maybe Makoto, maybe Makoto. But other than that, it's better. You're better off not doing the Keeper Gen at all against any other character, because as I said before, the spacing of it is way too difficult. So one thing you can do if you're worried about the damage or, you know, worried about getting a reset afterwards, um, if you do a jab short song on any bigger character, you can just simply do. Standing strong, low forward into low roundhouse, and then you know, do a mix up afterwards. The same exact way you would do a keeper gen mix up. So you would do something like something like this, and then continue the combo afterwards. So that's one variation you can do on the bigger characters, on characters that you can't use the keeper gen on. But again, keeper gen is basically used for the shotos, yun and yang. And maybe Makoto, maybe Chun Li too. It's a little, it's a little difficult to get the spacing of it because their hitboxes are so big. Now, when it comes to the high punch loop, that's a little bit different. You get to have uh, more chances to do that on um, on a lot of different characters. So, hmm. Some characters, if you do the strong on them, uh. To whiff it, if you do a jab shot strong into shoulder and then you want to continue it with a low forward and then do the high punch loop from there, sometimes the strong might hit. So, for example, for example, on somebody like like Alex, it's it's weird on Alex. Let me just get the meter first, and uh... So with the shoulder... Oops. With the shoulder into the standing strong variation that I was talking about, you can probably do the keeper gen on him. But... If you delay it a little bit, then maybe it'll hit, but as you can see, if you do it too fast, then the standing strong, uh, the Kara of Fierce will, the Kara from the Fierce will hit him. So, it's, it's a little wonky on the bigger characters, as I said. Now, maybe there's a variation I can do for this. It's it's 
not worth the trouble to get the Keeper Gen or the Kara, Kara Loop on any of the bigger characters. One, because their hitbox is too big, so so it'll mess up the Kara if you try it. The Standing Strong will hit them if you're trying to whiff it. So that's not really that good. And two, they're bigger characters, so the combo potential on them is a lot easier to do when you want to do a, a carry over, a screen carry. So, so for example, if you if you're like playing against an Alex player and you get a jab for strong like this, you can do you can do a standing roundhouse, uh, like a standing strong into standing roundhouse, then do a high punch to con con to continue it afterwards. Or you should be able to get the high punch afterwards. Uh, you could probably do a dash punch or a uh, or a fall fierce, yeah. and then continue the combo afterwards. And then continue it afterwards. So that goes for all the bigger characters, obviously because they're bigger, you have more juggle potential. So that's a uh, one example that you can probably do. So that's why I specifically emphasize that these uh, these two variations you want to use on the Shotos, Twins, Chon and Makoto. Whereas everybody else, you, it's possible to use the high punch loop on a bunch of the other characters, but um, the uh, Keeper Gen I don't recommend. So uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it. I mean, you know, Keeper Gen. Uh, basically, you're just adding a low forward to everything, so it's uh, so again, it's it's with standing strong into standing fierce, low forward, with standing strong into standing fierce, low forward, and then continue it afterwards, and then continue it afterwards. And then just keep it going after that. The only way you'll probably mess this up is if you do the down while you're pressing the strong. So that's the only way you can mess that up. And again, with the high punch loop, it's just strong fierce. But you have to hold forward for the strong and then go, go to neutral for the fierce. So it's forward strong fierce, forward strong fierce, forward strong fierce. And then... So that's the basic gist of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, that little tutorial. Um, I will be uploading this soon. And uh, yeah, I mean, any other questions? Feel free to let me know in uh, in comments or in the chat or whatever. So. So now, maybe I can actually start playing people. Yeah, It's very easy to mess it up. Shit. Oh my god. What? life fuck 
I pity the fools who get hit by that shit. Um, 